What is it? It's a UBA. A UBA? Universal Business Adapter. What's it do? It connects anything to everything. What's this for? Your laptop, your mainframe, call center, Unix servers, Linux servers, internet, supply chain, payroll system, HR, email. Slick. Is it affordable? Fast. Easy. Very. Does it work in Europe? You need an adapter. Billy Punk who thinks the world's still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat! <laughs> Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know he believes it. So, Kyrie, the Earth is flat, right? Yeah. 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 So whatever. That's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> Wherever you are, make it, make it T T T Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently at war with the mainstream scientific community. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, then you are not very good at the Internet. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, this show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern, and if it's not December 5th, 2017, then this is a rerun. Quick announcements. The Flat Earth Convention UK is going to be held April 27th, 28th, and 29th. You guys want to look it up? Just go to flatearthconventionuk.co.uk. Both challenges that we previously had going for a while, that being the Jeffrey Grupp challenge and the Big Money challenge, are now gone. They are forever buried because nobody ever responded to us. And I'm pretty sure the Jeffrey Grupp challenge was out there for, oh, good Lord, like 18 months. And the Big Money Challenge, I think, was over a year. So they have now been replaced by the Mark Sargent Flat Earth Challenge. This is my personal declaration of war from Flat Earth against mainstream science. I, Mark Sargent, hereby put forth a challenge to any university, foreign or domestic, to debate or discuss the Flat Earth reality. The short version is this. You fly me in, take care of my hotel, and I'll face down any scientific body you put against me. My only debate requirement is that you have someone with a master's degree in a physical science either participating in or supervising the event. You accept this challenge, and you'll be treated with respect. If not, then you're just cowards, hiding behind empty equations. So the phone lines have been turned off. And they will not be turned on again until I see fit. And until that time, we are only going to do subject matter experts and emails. Subject matter experts to date include 
United States Navy missile instructor, U.S. Air Force navigator, United States Marine Corps sniper instructor, United States Navy submarine chief, U.S. Army artillery radar operator, an Australian intelligence officer, an American flight instructor, an industrial engineer specializing in valves and seals, a career surveyor of 32 years, an international shipping expert, a corporate travel agent, an air traffic controller, United States Army master gunner, an aviation and ground training combat expert, a USDA surveyor of 27 years, a 32nd degree mason, and a etheric science researcher, a commercial airline captain, a commercial airline co-pilot, an industrial vacuum expert, and, hey, a merchant marine for good measure. So if you are any of those things or think you can add to the Flat Earth argument, please, by all means, get a hold of me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net or call 303-494-6631. Both those pieces of information are in every single video description that I've ever made and in the clues as well. And I think that's it for announcements. So let's get right to the emails. First one's called Experiments. Goes a little something like this. Mark, I will start with the most dramatic that no one, I don't think this person is English, by the way, I'm reading it as is. As that no one demonstrated yet. You need a glass of water with opening not too wide. I, I Normally I would slip into a Russian accent for this, but I'm not going to. Uh, the glass should be filled to the brims. You use regular printing paper, not too thick. Cover the glass with paper. Put your palm straight over the paper, flat, level. With your other hand still holding the paper to the glass opening, you flip glass upside down and slowly remove hand from the paper. If you do it smoothly, I promise that the water will remain in the inverted glass held by a single thin piece of paper. I show it as a magic trick. If gravity was in fact a force, it would pull water out of the glass as soon as you remove your hand. But paper meets molecules of water, and because it is denser, water stops. The second one is an unboiled egg and salt. You put the unboiled egg in the water in front of a camera. It will sink to the bottom. Then you slowly add salt without removing an egg and slowly stirring. As soon as density increases, the egg floats to the surface. Surely, if gravity was in operation, it does not matter what's in the water. The egg would remain at the bottom. It's best to use warm water so salt dissolves faster. Please show these two. The first one is really mind-blowing. You have big platform. Many people will see these. Maybe some scientific publication will again feature you trying to explain, and even more people will see it. Thank you, Mark. And that's from Yalina Surkan, T-S-U-R-K-A-N. And I do not know what country that person is from. So thank you very much for that. That's awesome. This one's called the... Iotovos effect. Mark, first off, thanks for all you do. It is greatly appreciated. Secondly, do you have any references for the Iotovos effect? Has the Flat Earth community already dealt with this claim? Is this not a claim that eastward travel is easier because of the Earth's rotation? Explain on Wikipedia here, and that effect is listed there on the link. Thanks, Sean, spreading the Flat Earth word in every small part of the world i don't know i I don't know if i'm I'm sure somebody's made it if you guys want to look it up just type in flat earth and then e-o-t-v-o-s effect i think actually the first word probably be fine for the search i don't know to be honest i i haven't really looked at it uh but if it hasn't been brought up by now two years later and probably not going to get a ton of traction but it's not bad sure why not This one's called Flat Earth Math. No, no, I'm sorry. It's by Flat Earth Math, but it's not who you think it is. It's called You and I Were Both Busted for Fireworks in College, circa 1986. All right. Mark, it's me again, Charles Breeling, a.k.a. Flat Earth Math. You and I have a lot in common. I think we're less than a month difference in age. And we both have some pyrotechnic adventures in college. Your adventure was far more serious. They just made me attend counseling and put me on probation. Smiley face. Nice. Uh, But we should talk. Seriously. I tell everyone my YouTube channel was inspired by you, which is the truth. Does Jeffrey Grupp still want a debate opponent? Smiley face. Cheers. Charles Breeling. 
uh, with his cell phone and a uh, thing down there dedicated to the math and science of the flat earth debate. Uh, to answer his question, no, Jeffrey Grubb, I, I look, I honestly haven't talked to Jeffrey now in like, I probably six or eight months because there was just nobody to, to do the challenge. I don't even know what he's doing. I know his channel's still up there and he's made a whole bunch of great videos and he's been interviewed by a few people, but I haven't, I haven't seen him. So, um, yeah. And, and thank you for doing the fireworks thing, although you didn't give me much uh, as far as the details. You're why, just counseling? That's it? How do you get counseling for a fireworks charge? Mine was way more stiff than that. Anyway, let's move on. This one's called Las Vegas from the Flat Point of View. Hey, Mark, after seeing the Jonathan, you got to remember this, these guys, this was, uh, this, these emails are all the way back in October. That's how far behind I am. Uh, after seeing the Jonathan Smith interview on CNN, I can safely assume this false flag event is nothing more than a test. They seriously need to find out, one, how dumb or smart are they? Two, how much we can safely get away with? And three, are they, those of us who realize this is fake, reacting exactly how we thought they would? This is nothing more than an aptitude test or a Briggs Meyer, <laughs> funny, for the masses. With the Flat Earth Conference around the corner, increasing independent experiments and a rapidly approaching Flat Earth Media watershed moment, they desperately need a head count for when we physically start to venture up and out from our geographical homesteads. Pop quiz for... Uh-huh. Nope. Flat Earth cringe joke of the day. What did one flat screen say to the other? Does my ass look big on this wall? Ah, it's funny. That's from Sick Boy, which I believe is a train spotting reference. And it's spelled S-I-C-C-B-O-Y. Good movie reference. I like it. All right, this one's called Flat Earther Who Wants to Talk. Hi, my name is Johan. I'm 34 and I'm living in Belgium. I feel the need to get in contact with you. If I could, I would even give you a call, but I am a stubborn one. I lay my cell phone away three years ago. I lay my cell phone away. I lost my cell phone, gave it away. I think he gave, I don't know. And I have no normal phone line anymore. Okay, it's going to be kind of tough then for us to talk. I heard your movie of the Dutch co-pilot on your show. She is KLM, right? I can neither confirm nor deny. She is KLM. I have a tough time actually in my private life because I see the things not so nice for the future. And if that becomes true, I don't want to be there to witness that or even worse, be part of that. I'm a history junkie and actually research to New Swabia brought me to Flat Earth. If I write mistakes, I'm very sorry, self-educated and just and you just write is as I think is right, even when it's wrong. Oh, boy. Better to try to communicate than to remain silence. I actually said that word right. I figured even when it is writing mistakes, silence is giving them who want us to believe in the ball all the powers, and then you are even agreeing with them. So, yeah. I'm quite alone. My parents died. This year, my dad, six years ago, my mom, worked myself in healthcare for a while and my mom her entire life. I even hunt the reasons why cancer exists. And for me, it's just daily pain, actually. I had a weird times in my life that as a child, I had predictions and now most are coming true. Well, I got to face it alone. Daily, I am engaged in flat earth work and research to the Third Reich. Because basically for me, follow the sources to the root, right? I also speak German, French, and Flemish, which is Dutch-like. I hope to have the chance of a conversation with you, even when it's only written at this stage. I'm quite fond of your work. So for this, thank you very much for your time and efforts. Peace be with you. A concerned Belgian. Cheers, Johan. You know what? I have not written back to him, and it was a while ago, so I'm going to put that in my... Respond to Pile. Sorry it took me so long on that one. Uh, this one's called Congratulations on the FE Conference 2017. This is before it happened, actually. Knowing how long it takes for you to read my email, I'm writing this months in advance. 
because I wanted to be uh, the first to congratulate you and everyone else for the Flat Earth 2017 conference. My question for you, Mark, is what critiques of the conference do you have? What would you want done differently next year? Thanks, Tony from Denver. Um, and Tony, it's, it's a good question. I don't know if if I would do anything different. As, as far as next year, that's next year. I mean, it's, it's literally, uh, it's, a, it's a full year from now. Uh, this one, I don't think I would have changed anything. It, it, it was it exceeded all my expectations. Nothing went wrong. I mean, get a member. We had some security issues going down there, which we really didn't tell people. But we had a fantastic security staff, which was great. Uh, the speakers were outstanding. We had the the media was was way above and beyond. I mean, we had a ton of media there, way more than I expected. And the vendors were great. And I mean, the the location was good. Honestly, I, I wouldn't have changed a thing. I mean, the only thing I, I maybe would have, no, no, I still wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't. And as far as good next year goes, I don't know. I mean, there's, if, if, remember for a first year, it was outstanding. Now next year, will they have like separate tracks? So if you want to go down one path, uh, you know, so there's be multiple speakers speaking simultaneously in different rooms and that's to be expected if you're going to do a, uh, um, a multi-path thing and it's going to be, it's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. No, I don't, I don't think I'd change anything. And plus it's not my conference. That's, that's the big thing. I, I was just humbled to be there and whoever runs the conference, they run the conference. I, I, people, if there's critiques to be made, I'd have it be made from the attendees, not the presenters. Cause the presenters is a whole nother world. Uh, you know, we, we don't necessarily have to pay anything to get there and except for, you know, our airline tickets and we're, we're treated a little differently. And so I, it's, it's not the same experience for, for me as it does with people. If you, you know, anyone that's doing a, a conference, I would just listen to whatever the consensus of the people that came. If you get emails from there, I mean, do a, do a, um, a little survey on the, on the website and see what, what people would do. That's what I do anyway. So, but thank you for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this one's called Day and Night. Hi, Mark. This is, oh boy, Arriberto Santos from, I'll spell it, A-U-R-R-E-Berto. A-U-R-I-B-E-R-T-O, Santos from Brazil. And I would like to ask you some questions. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness, I, am I doing a sermon here? And the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. That's Genesis 1, verses 3 through 5. After he created the sun and the moon, that means the day already existed without the sun. Mm, good one. And another question is, some flat earthers say the moon has its own light. Yeah, I'm one of them. How come the moon is always shine, faces the sun, and never the other side? Actually, it no, we we do see the we do see the dark side. Well, our dark side of the moon. It's, we always see the same face. Sometimes it's lit, and sometimes it's not. So anyway, he goes. Please help me explain to the effing globalists from a terra planista. That's flat Earth or in Portuguese. Stay flat, Alberto. And yeah, just a, a quick little comment on that. There, if you look in any of the, not just the, the the Christian texts, but some of the other texts, when it comes to religion, they do talk about a world where it was light and dark, but there was no sun, which, if you believe in coincidence, that's what we used to do in the early simulations, in the early computer versions of reality that we would build. We we didn't have we didn't use a light source. We just made the sky light or dark. It was it was more too much programming to put in a sun in the beginning. So it was literally just shades of light uh, and you know it would get lighter and then it would get darker. Kind of like the northwest. In the northwest if you unless you live up in the northwest you don't understand where the clouds are so thick that you would just the clouds would just get lighter and then they would get darker because there would be days, if not weeks, where you wouldn't know where the sun was. So interesting. But yeah, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, Genesis 1, verses 3 through 5. It's good. This one's called... Uh, this is kind of a long title. This is Mari Ansley, Still Earth Journey, Sending Praise. Hello, Mark. My new channel is Still Earth Journey. I believe we are all here on our own spiritual journey. 
I am curious what your spiritual journey is now that we realize we are not spinning on a ball. My question is, where do you stand on the religious side of your understanding of where we are? Do you believe Jesus walked on this planet? And she spelled it away to where it's like plain. I wanted to let you know I went to the Portland meetup last night. It was great to be in a room full of still flat earthers. You were in the conversation as a positive, positive influence on this movement. Thank you. Someday we shall meet. Until then, keep flat, Mari. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, the when it comes to the religious side, again, a lot of people know, but hopefully you're listening. I was raised a strong born-again Christian, went to vacation Bible school, went to youth group, went to all that fun stuff, you know, summer camps, and uh, church was not just a Sunday thing for me, and fell away from it when I went to college, or university as they like to call it outside the United States. Maybe I should just say university. I'll say university. Try to anyway. And... When I got into Flat Earth, I got back into it. So there you go. This next one's called Hey. Kind of a short one. Hi there, Mark. I was wondering if there was a team ready or are there any groups out there that are going to try getting past the ice wall themselves? I'm a survivalist and want to go, but my chances alone are slim. <laughs> That's good. Kind of an understatement. A group is probably the smartest way to go, and since you are in the know, was wondering if you know of anyone that will try to get past the ice wall or try to get to the center. That's from Christian. No, Christian, I do not know anybody that's uh, going to the ice wall or trying to get to the center right now. Uh, it's, it's out of all the tests you can do. That is probably the toughest one and the one I don't recommend because we're talking about military forces. We're talking about multiple treaties. Get to remember, the only people that are even down in Antarctica, they're even publicly announced as being in Antarctica, are the military and military scientists. That's it. Nobody knows ants. Uh, wow, tongue tied. Nobody knows, still tongue tied. Nobody owns Antarctica. And the Antarctic Treaty, which was put in place, says that no corporation co can go down there and you are not going to be allowed to just run amok in Antarctica. So an expedition, no, wouldn't bank out. There's all sorts of other tests you can do without going to Antarctica. Now, eventually, sooner or later, yes, yeah, somebody's going to have to fess up when it comes to that stuff. But right now, no. This one, oh boy, the name is actually in Russian. I can't even... Oh, okay, good. I think he, he said... Okay, so it's called Flat Earth, and it's sent by a whole bunch of Russian characters. And it says, Hey, Mark, I'm from Russia. My name is Konstantin. Make a video about the level and the horizon of the sea. Where I live, there is no sea. Do not forget to send me a copy. <laughs> what? I don't even understand that request. Make a video about the level and the horizon of the sea. Where I live, there is no sea. I, I don't I don't know what he means from this. And plus, come on, why why would you ask me? There's plenty of people that have made videos about the horizon and levels and all sorts of fun stuff that's involved with the water. In fact, I've never even made my own personal water video. So why are you asking me? Come on, Constantine, get off my back. Holy smokes, man. Uh, I got a few minutes to the first break. Let's see what else we can do. What damage we can cause. How about this one? Flat Earth frustration. Hello, Mark. I've been on this research for some time now. I am leaning more towards the flat earth, but with the dome. I just want to reach out and thank you for doing what you do. I'm a little frustrated to not be able to get solid evidence to prove flat earth. Not because I don't believe it. It's more because I would like to have evidence to prove to the world. Yeah, you and me both, man. You, you and me and a whole bunch of other people. Is there such a thing going on in this world? What, proof of a flat earth? No, not yet. You'd know if there was. Someone out there you know who is doing big research, you, uh, who has not been shut down. Yeah, look at um, uh, the stuff that Flat Earth Core is going to be doing, and Jaren, and other people. I mean, there's there's experiments being done all the time, and there's been a whole bunch of experiments so far. So don't give up hope, Mario. Oh, and by the way, his name's Mario Magana, M-A-G-A-N-A. So, no, there's plenty of experiments happening. You just got to look. This one's called MGHK. Mark, 
In the military in Norway, I was first and second shooter with the machine gun. This gun is an HK, Heckler & Koch, K-O-C-H, by the way. By the way, that's one of my favorite brands of, of uh, rifles of all time. A gun made in Germany. Yes, I know. After firing 30 shots, we have to shift the pipe with gloves. We could have fired more shots, but this was the safety way. And I had to use gloves. The pipe was warm. We used belt clips. And I have got the shooter's mark for hitting a blink blink in about 100 meters, meaning he's a pretty good shot. And in action, this gun is always trying to get upwards. Just my experience. Regards, Roy. And yeah, what he's talking about is the, the Vegas thing, where there's supposedly like over a thousand rounds fired from that hotel room, you know, from multiple rifles. Like with with what what kind of rifles were used? And they said AR-15. No, that those barrels would have gotten so hot they would have gunked up in two seconds. It would have been. There's no way. No way. And they were supposed to. He was supposed to use like what hundred round mags? Come on. No, the biggest thing was a piece of crap. In fact, no one's even talking about the biggest thing anymore. But thank you for that, by the way, Roy. Uh, two minutes, two minutes to the break. Let's see if we can get this one in. I think we can. This one's called Hi. This one's really short. Hi, Mark. I am a fan of your research living in Liverpool, England. Are you coming to the UK to spread the word? It would be great to hear you in person on my home turf. Thanks for your hard work making great videos. Delia McInerney. McInerney. And I don't know. Maybe. We'll see if uh, if I get to go to the UK or not. Not sure yet at this point. And that video or that thing was so short that I'm going to do one more. Let's do... Oh, we'll do it real fast. This one's called Las Vegas Shooting Motive and Profile. Mark, I really loved your breakdown with the Master Gunner this week. I, too, am into shooting sports and have been around the guns my entire life. That being said, I think you're seeing the big picture, but not letting it sink in. The reason this shooter doesn't fit the profile for a perpetrator or have a motive is fundamental to this false flag. The message is that anybody is capable of committing these horrendous crimes without forewarning or clues. Yeah, I thought about that. That is the angle that they want to push. Previous mass shooting, the accused always had a backstory. Bullied, mentally unstable, on psychotropics, loners, desperate, etc. Paddock was a successful person, had a girlfriend, and presumably was enjoying life. So the push is going to be against everyone. Nobody is safe because anybody could just go off the handle and kill dozens without prior notice at any time. They will roll out more ridiculous safety measures, and we will see a tighter squeeze on all liberties. We cannot let this crap happen. Anyway, just wanted to get that out. Keep up the awesome work and keep it flat, my friend. That's from Nick in Colorado. Stay tuned. We'll be back in three minutes. Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, and we are doing emails tonight. So let's get back to it. This one's called The Throne of God. Mark, I just got done listening to your interview, Air Traffic Controller Meets Flight Instructor on a Flat Earth, otherwise known as Strange World number 43. I want that paper that Dale wrote called The Throne of God. I absolutely love the interviews that you do on here. I came across Flat Earth about month, four months ago, and it's been making a ton of sense to me. Thanks for all you do. Titus. I don't think I've actually known a guy named Titus. So that's really cool. The Yeah, the paper that he's talking about, I've actually got it on my desktop. It's called Harmony. 
but he calls it the throne of God, and I'm more than happy to send the PDF to anybody that wants it. It's a pretty interesting read. It's not a light reading, that's for sure. So all you have to do is email me at msargent23, that's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and just put I want throne of God or harmony in the title somewhere, and I'll just shoot it off to you. Same thing goes with the um, survival guide, which you never know. It could come in handy if the Korea thing ever decides to pull the trigger. Uh, that one's called Empty Shelves. All you have to do is write survival guide. When you email me, and I will shoot it off to you. It's only, I think, like two megs. Pretty, it's 110 pages. My only re- request there is that you print it out. Don't be a schmuck and, and have it just sitting around if, if the power goes out because that would you'd be just kicking yourself. It's like, oh, I got to charge up my phone. I need to know what, what, to, what to buy next or what to steal next. And lastly, but not least, regarding that email, when it comes to the interviews, you guys want to check out some, some fun stuff. I actually compiled all the interviews of the subject matter experts. It, you, all you have to do is go into YouTube and type in Flat Earth Testimony Shows or Flat Earth Testimonies. And it'll pop up a little playlist. And it has all the interviews of everybody, all the, you know, if the, the people that I listed off in the very beginning of the show, all the subject matter experts, it has all of them listed in a row in chronological order, I believe. So back to the emails. This one's called Flat Earth Clues Video. Hi, Mark. I was looking for a little distraction after work and chanced upon your video. Had heard of the Flat Earth Theory, but hadn't thought much of it. Almost two hours into the video, I'm intrigued. Up until now, my boredom with the status quo and pretty much everything in general has been almost overwhelming. Thank you for the time and effort you have put into this. I'm mind-boggled, but absolutely loving it. Thank you, Summer. Summer else. You're very welcome, Summer, and she shares some of the same things that I do. I was really, really bored with mainstream media and conspiracies in general. And this was – Flat Earth is a fantastic – Flat Earth will suck you in and it will keep you going for a long, long time. Moving on, let's look at – what's this one? This one's called 1967 French Postal Service Book. Hi, Mark. I've had this information a while before deciding who to send it to. It may be nothing, but it shook me a little. I found it cleaning my mom's garage. She had to learn it all when she was about to become a civil servant. I have the whole book with me if you need extra reference. I am definitely a closet FE, but keep up your educating of the people. Yours sincerely, Celine. And I don't know if I have looked at this yet. Let me open it up real fast. Open with, let's open it with paint. And yeah, it's a flat earth map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's an AE map with some shipping routes on it. Old school style and a lot of the stuff centering from Europe and the UK. Oh, it's interesting. Huh. I don't know if it really proves anything, but it's, but it's an interesting looking map. I may have to save that. So thank you for that. Celine from, I believe England, the way she spelled mum. All right. So this one's called documentary film and oh man, hopefully I responded to this. <laughs> Dear Mark Sargent, my name is Christopher Dreyer. I'm an independent documentary filmmaker from Denmark working for the production company Plus Pictures. Uh, our main focus is international documentary feature films. I am currently researching into making a documentary about flat earth theory and how it's growing. My main focus will be on the people behind the theories, understanding the scene. I've been going through your closed world website and read some articles about you. seems to me you are a strong voice in the movement with interesting views on things. Would you be interested in hearing more about the part? Par- Possible participation in such a project. Kind regards, Christopher. And you know what? I'm going to because this was a law. This was a while ago. This was not quite two months ago. I'm hopeful. I think I responded to him. I just wanted to make sure. Um, so that's going to be in my respond pile. This one's called the library is the chair, and then it goes binary one zero zero one 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 zero one. Sent by. Amir. Hi, Mark. Amir here is Sandy is Sandy. Hope you're well, man. I just got off speaking with David deep inside the rabbit hole and we got pretty deep and in there, this Vegas shooting, the Illuminati cards. David said you had the card before the shooting took place. Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, I have to hear it from someone I know to believe it, man. I think I wrote it back and said, yeah, absolutely. Do you mind sending a picture of it? This is true. I'm literally speechless. There's something pretty messed up going on, man. Chat soon, Amir. 
And yeah, not only did I have it, but I had it and I gave it to Patricia Steer from Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. She has the only English-speaking Vegas card. So I had it here, though. I absolutely had it here. I had a little plastic bag. And then I bought five, five six more from uh, Europe, from Germany. You can't even find them in the States right now. Well, you might be able to today, but I couldn't back at the time. The price went up quite a bit after the Vegas thing because now it's one of the prophecy cards. Interesting, the whole Illuminati New World Order card deck. All right, this one's called L.A. Meetup Instrumental Music. What up, Mark? It's Tone. Met you last night at the meetup. Here's some music for you or anyone else that... It's hard to believe the L.A. thing was that long. It doesn't seem like that long ago. Or anyone else that needs some. I don't have much on there right now, but I'll be loading up some more. Anyway, nice meeting you. You're a cool-ass dude, Tone. <laughs> nice. Of course, when I ever hear Tone, I always think of Tone Loke from the late 80s. But that's really cool. And I, I did respond to that guy. Awesome. This one's also called Flat Earth Music. Hey, Mark. Arthur from Rhode Island again. Still a huge fan. Keep it up. Just a quick mention. Being a huge Tom Petty fan all my life. In the wake of his recent passing, may he rest in peace. I did some deeper inquiry on some of his more recent and less propagated work and was magnificently blown away when coming across the song Home off his 06 album Highway Companion. The chorus is as follows. And tonight I settled down easy beneath this big sky dome. Times are strange and my mind can change, but honey, your arms feel like home. I thought it to be rather direct, not to mention the album cover is a flat plane with a rocket upright in the middle with an astronaut holding a monkey's hand. I don't know, though. I loved his music immensely and am utterly unsure of pointing this out to the masses considering Flack and he not being around to defend himself. But I figured you'd love it regardless. Just thought I'd share it with you. Your fan, Arthur. Thank you, Arthur. And, and yeah, I mean, there's who knows there. there. I absolutely know there's a whole bunch of celebrities out there that are closet flat earthers. So was Tom Petty one of them? Hard to say. This one's called questions regarding flat earth. Hi, Mark. I recently watched your documentary under the dome. It was very interesting for me, but posted posted. No, no, no. Check. Do your spell checking, guys, but you got to read it after you do spell checking. Uh, but posed a few questions, and perhaps you have other videos to refer me to this. But the sun has me stumped. Oh, boy. I see where this is going. In a flat Earth model, does the sun rotate around the Earth? Yes, it does. Or does the Earth still rotate around the sun? No, it doesn't. That would be a geocentric model. I had read that if the Earth is flat, we would still see the sun in the horizon even when it's setting in another country. I'm not a science person, so I don't know about that. I started reading the lost books of the Bible, then reading about Antarctica, then came across your video. I'm not sure how much I believe at this point, but nonetheless, it's interesting, and I feel it's good to be educated on many beliefs. Thanks for your help, Naomi. You're very welcome, Naomi. And again, another woman. How many? We've had quite a few female uh, emails on this. Again, shows you the, the demographics, how it's different. Flat Earth is a really different animal. This one's called question, and then five question marks after that. Flat Earth friends. Uh, I've been researching Flat Earth for almost two years and have one question that maybe you can answer. A few days ago here in Montana, there was a full moon, and in the morning, both the sun and the moon were visible. Why then is the moon, which is on the other side of the plane, visible, but at night when the sun is on the other side of the plane, it's much brighter but not visible? Multiple display systems. It's easy. Uh, the moon should disappear by the laws of perspective, but does not. There must be some other optical anomaly. Yeah, it's the projection system. It's wh whatever is being used up there. To, uh, I mean, we're talking about technology that is beyond us right now, but we're getting there. We're getting there real, real close. As a matter of fact, um, I was mentioning to somebody during an interview today, look up the company. I put a video out on it uh, that I, I stole basically the idea from Globebusters. The, uh, the Colux company, C-O-E-L-U-X, which is making skylights that simulate blue sky and a sun. And you can put them anywhere. And, and it gives parallax with the sun on top of us. So you're walking by. If you didn't know any better, you'd swear you were looking up through a window in your ceiling at the sun. It's that good. 
So, and that's what we can do now with a small screen today. You can buy them right now, a couple thousand dollars. Install a sun, a, literally a, um, a, a skylight anywhere you want in your home, even in a basement. That used to be the contractor's joke, as useful as a skylight in a basement. Now, not so much. Now that joke's probably going to go away, and we'll be left with a screen door on a submarine. That's what's going to happen. Uh, let's see. He finishes up the email saying, The other problem is the close sun with clouds, clouds passing behind the sun. The sun and the moon must be closer and skewed by atmosphere, inert gases, or magnetic flux lines. Even though the geometry works out to about 3,000 miles high, there is a problem. And that's from John. Yeah, same same sort of thing. We don't know exactly what's going on with the sun or the moon, other than they are independent light sources. The moon generating its own light, and what you know, the optics when it comes to the sun. All right, this one's called Las Vegas Hammer. You're wondering why we're talking about Vegas. It's because some of these emails, quite a few. We're still in October. Sorry, guys. I get a lot of emails. Okay, so this one says what? Mark, I was listening to a recent interview you did today reference the hammer size and strength of windows. Oh, yeah, the, the basically the shockproof windows or shock-resistant windows. I can attest to this. In the past, I worked property demolition for a time on the Carolina coast. Remember trying to just uh, get through double-pane hurricane windows? Terribly difficult. Broke the back prong off the hammer, actually. Sounded sort of like a shot going going off when it finally burst. And that's from Virgil. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because they, they put the hammer, if you guys look at the, the, the pictures from the Vegas thing, they actually put this tiny, I mean, this hammer wasn't even the size of a framing hammer. Uh, yeah, it had a bigger head on it, but it's like, what sort of leverage are you going to get from that thing? And he supposedly busted through two of those windows with a tiny hammer like that. It's like, what, not, he's not going to bring up an eight-pound sledge? Or a 10-pound sledge or what biggest sledge you can freaking find. Or I don't know. Here's the thought. Just shoot through the freaking window. But uh, I don't want to get into it. That is not what this show is about. This show is about just emails in general. I don't want to get off on a Las Vegas rant. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I wonder, do you have any book or magazine for Flat Earth? Yes, I do. It's actually called Flat Earth Clues. You can buy it on Amazon. Can you mail it to me to my address? And he gives an address in Indianapolis. Uh, this is Andy. I tried to call you. I left a message. Have a good day. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, I do have a book, but I, I can't just send it to you. I could probably send you the the um, the clues. The tra- You know what? I'll send him the transcripts to the clues. That's what I'll do. And then he can read it if he wants. If you guys want the transcripts. I mean, the transcripts are actually out there. But uh, if if you want the transcripts, just let me know. Okay, this one's called the Russell Brand interview. Oh, good. We're getting up at least to a little more current. Hi, Mark. Hope you are well. Wow, that guy is an absolute twat. Just listen to that interview. He has made me embarrassed to be British. What a joker. <laughs> Kind regards, uh, Reese. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I know I know Reese. He's from Dubai. And he set me up, me up with a uh, Dubai radio station for a while back. But, yeah, the Russell Brand interview. No, I didn't mind. I, I didn't mind that, one, it was at 3 in the morning my time because he does a lunchtime show over there. It would have been better if he did, like, a breakfast show because then it would have been, like, midnight my time. But, no, because it was lunch, I had to wait till 3, 3 a.m. And so I had to basically go to sleep and then, and then wake up to it. And to be fair, Russell, I liked Russell's take on it or his approach he less he let me run with it more than Piers Morgan did uh at least I knew what I was getting with Russell you know he's a comedian by trade he's not going to let me ramble too long and when we got into it you know eventually I, I had a little bit of a head of steam going he realized it and then took over which was fine I, I totally understand where he was going with that so uh whereas Piers uh, he was on the astronaut side and if you guys watched that interview two things you might want to take note of one was I was not allowed to talk to the astronaut Terry Verts V I R T S directly he was not allowed to well no no I could I'm sorry I could talk to him but he would not address me he wouldn't use my name he wouldn't address my questions and Piers actually stepped in for him at one point and and made sure he didn't answer the blue marble shot because he couldn't so, did we could look? You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna handicap me that badly, you know, all I was hoping for is to making through without being cut off. Because remember, I was coming in through Skype, 
There was no way I was going to attack. No way, no how. Not on a, you only get one chance to make a first impression. And that particular interview wasn't for me. It was for the other producers out there that are watching it that hopefully will bring me on their program. And then I will do a little bit more. But this one, no. Because if you get cut off, and you know, Pierce does a little, little you know, mention, and then all of a sudden my Skype connection gets cut off, they'll just blame it on technical support and technical difficulties. So, anyway. Moving on. But yeah, Russell Brand. I actually, I'm a fan of Russell Brand. I, I Not his comedy so much, but I did like him in some of his movies. I liked I liked the remake of Arthur with uh, the old you know version with Dudley Moore and Liza Minnelli. And I really liked his version of it. it he plays that role, that spoiled British ass really well. I don't think, I don't think it was really much of a stretch for him. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. This one's called, what's this one's called? I am blown away, and I cannot believe this is so obvious now. To Mark, I know you probably get a lot of emails, but I am shocked at how blind I have been all my life. I am a private pilot, an ex-Coast Guard auxiliary, an engineer, and a marksman. So I have taken extensive navigation both for pilot and seamanship. I have trained with many guns, and I've always wondered why they teach us that when we have to take we have to take into account the Earth's rotation when making a north-south rifle shot, yet I was never taught that when landing my plane on north-south runway that the Earth's rotation was ever something to be considered. Hmm. Good point, because the, a plane is just a really, really slow-moving bullet. Good point. The Earth moving twice the cruising speed of the plane, you would never be able to land, especially when you are on final approach. You slow to just above stall speed at over 100 miles an hour. How in the world would you be able to line up with a runway going sideways at 10 times your airspeed? I also been a at sea countless times and usually the horizon is 12 miles away on a clear day. I have never noticed the curvature on the water. I always just thought it was too gradual to notice, so never thought much about it. This past week I started doing the math. At 100 times the curvature is 66, 66 feet down. So if I was flying a jet 600 miles an hour, which is usual for an airliner with a little tailwind, that would be 100 miles in 10 minutes. I would roughly have to desalinate the nose. Desalinate? I don't think. Descend the nose? I think he's meant descend. The nose of the plane, 666 feet per minute. That is a huge adjustment. The comfortable descent rate is 500 feet per minute. So a constant curvature adjustment would be considerable enough that even passengers would notice. But in the millions of miles I have flown in my lifetime, this has never happened. How could I have been fooled all my life? I should have noticed all this before. I am an engineer by profession, and my job is a worldwide troubleshooter for a big Japanese company. I cannot believe I have missed all these clues about the flat earth in my life. It has taken me a week now, and I still cannot get over how I've been fooled all my life. Frustrated and mad for being fooled. <laughs> Regards, Steve. Thanks, Steve. And, yeah. Uh, oh, he's out of, by the way, he's out of Boca Raton, Florida. And yeah, yeah, I, I completely understand. It's a great points. Thank you for, for writing and mentioning that. This one's called Long Mount, Mountain? Long Mountain. Been a flat roofer for a long time. Mark, been listening a lot in the last year. Don't have anyone around me that is talking about this flat earth possibility or that doesn't have cognitive dissonance. I have thrown it out to a couple of people at the place I work, and, well, I have learned to hold back or to be more selective on initial wording or response because it could go badly. Do you hold any seminar-type seminar things in Colorado? No, I don't. My wife enjoys me sharing all these ideas, theories, and actually is seen. She is not a researcher like myself, and I'm not much of one. I have been in flat roofing for 32 years, actually a lot of roofing types, but flat mainly. I have a bachelor's in <laughs> in ISS, really, uh, an associate in mechanical drafting and technical illustration and went to school for about a year and a half for music and video business. I just turned 50, and it seems like I am supposed to challenge people's critical thinking. Anyway, looking for someone to listen to, chat with, or something uh, in the little amount of time I do have as I am a commercial roofing service manager and sub-residential, so I don't feel isolated. Videos and such just don't fill the human element. Isn't that the truth? Thanks for listening, Mark out of Denver. And 
yeah, for him, hopefully he's listening, uh, do the meetups. Just look up Flat Earth Meetup and then type in the name of your town or city or whatever's close to you. Usually it's going to be a big city like Phoenix or Los Angeles or New York or Atlanta or something like that. And once you type that in, you'll get a better feel of what's out there and, and who's out there. But I, Denver, absolutely there's people out there. You bet. I mean, in fact, there's Colorado. There's um, there's meetups in the Springs. There's meetups in Denver, and there's meetups in Fort Collins. I mean, there's three all the three the big three on the corridor. Uh, I should know. You know what? I'm gonna write him back and tell him. It's like look look up meetups. Hopefully, he knows this by now. Oh, that's what he didn't say. Long Mountain. I think he said Longmont. That's that's what he meant. Longmont, Colorado. Oh, good. Yes, yeah, so he can go to the Fort Collins one, which is just north of him. So that's really cool. All right, let's do, we have a couple more before the break. This one's called, what? Vintage Flat Earth Film. Hi, Mark. I came across this just now and had sent it to you. I consider this a real gem. I'm a 70-year-old flat earther, a retired magician in Las Vegas. Thanks to you and Eric, I've been on board for two years next month. I'm trying to spread the word as much as I can. At my age, I don't have to impress anyone and don't care who thinks I'm crazy. That's a, that's a great attitude. I love it. We in the Flat Earth community are so fortunate to have you. I always respected Eric until I heard him badmouth you in a video. Plus, I heard you say it. Hard for me to understand why he would do this as you have brought so many people into Flat Earth. When I saw my mailman today, he might be 40. He's black and a really nice guy. I don't know why he had to mention he was black. I said, hey, Glenn, have you researched Flat Earth? He got a big grin and said, Art, are you a Flat Earther? I said, look at my back window on my car. It says, it's flat. We talked for about five minutes, and he told me he was just getting started. Of course, I told him to go home and watch the Flat Earth Clues. I got his email ad, address, and will be turning him on to the best vids to save him time. Keep up what you're doing, Mark. Magic art. And his quote is, today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. Nice. Awesome. Do we have time for one more for the break? I think we do. Flatter questions. Yeah, I think we can do this. Mark, I've been researching Flat Earth for over two years, having fallen across both yours and Eric Dubay's videos. Go figure. Immediately, I felt that much of what was described and presented fell in step with my view of the world in terms of unanswered questions and observations that simply were not reflective of what we have always been taught. I have had a PPL, oh, pilot's license, have flown most of the world for over 20 years with my previous occupation. I owned a VSAT business in East and West Africa. My journey began in my mind trying to disprove all the points that Flat Earth presented, and frankly, most are well answers, ex answered, except one, I flew Cape Town to Perth on many occasions, taking two routes, one Emirates via Dubai, the other South African Airways direct Cape Town or Johannesburg to Perth. I've read a lot of people's points of view that this is a fictitious route, it is most, def most definitely is not, and takes an average only nine hours, whilst Cape Town to Dubai alone takes nine hours, and then a further 11 to 12 hours from Dubai to Perth, thus the Flat Earth map as it stands with Africa and Australia is not supported by the flight times in reality. Yep, I know that. I accept that many other routes are more logically supported by the Flat Earth map, but this route simply is not. Yep, absolutely true. Mark, what am I missing here? You're not missing anything. That's why the map is being tweaked constantly by people. I need to move on from this particular element as it is a stumbling block in my researching and testing other areas. Your assistance would be kindly appreciated. Thanks kindly, Alan Wood from Perth, Western Australia. Yep, it's got some good points there. This one's called, we have time for one more. This one's called Watched Your Video. Hello, Mark, I'm watching it through a second time. Yeah, I hear that a lot. It appears that it's a very strange situation we're in, enough that the United States and Russia launched missile tests into the firmament for years. I've seen UFOs. Me too. Why would they be in here with us? Why not? And why are there, Why are our leaders all psychopathic? Eh, power corrupts. It seems like some sort of experiment gone wrong. Anyway, just wanted to touch base since you offered... Any new information since your video could be helpful. Thanks, Lars. And hopefully Lars is good. Yeah, I'm sure Lars has by now. He's found all the stuff. 
for flat earth clues. I get that a lot. You remember the the two biggest the the two videos with the biggest hits out there when it comes to flat earth. One's called Under the Dome, uh, full documentary. The other one's called They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever. They were both on completely separate channels from mine, and they happened to both be the flat earth clues. But somebody just mashed them together and put a different name on them, and they, they made a lot of nickels off of that one. I gave millions and millions of hits. But hey, whatever, spread the word, right? Coming back in three minutes. This is the Truth Frequency Radio Network. We are TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Major Kong. Major Kong. Welcome back to Strange World, part three of four, and that's got to be one of my favorite tracks that Chip Baker did for me called Major Kong, and if you're wondering why all those sound bites sound familiar, it's because they are from the classic movie Dr. Strangelove by Stanley Kubrick. Okay, <clears throat> back to emails. This one's called Sunset Idea. Mark, I appreciate what you do and have always questioned the mainstream thought process and I believe that we are being misled on so many levels in today's society. I live in northwest Georgia. And as the sun set, I had an idea pertaining to our human visual perspective. A lot of folks in the Flat Earth community make videos of ships at sea that disappear over the horizon and zoom in to bring them back into view. If someone had the correct equipment so that they could safely video the sunset and then zoom in to bring the sun back into view, that would certainly be amazing to see. Not even sure if that would be possible or if it's been done. I figured someone would know if it's possible, if it's been done, or could find people to do it. I'm sure you're the man. I realize you are po probably inundated with emails, so no worries if uh, you do not respond. I just had the idea and had to put it out there. Stay safe and keep up the good work. Adam L. Williams. And yeah, Adam, you're absolutely right. In fact, uh, the ships are a great one. The sun, uh, the ships are always great for people because they can relate to to ships. You know, they're man-made. The sun is a little trickier. But yeah, when you zoom in on the sun, it does the same thing. Uh, it goes off. In fact, the fat of Morgana, atmospheric lensing, whatever you want to call it, that's what bleeds the sun into the horizon. If you took that away, honestly, if you took the atmosphere away, and I know people are saying, well, you're never going to take the atmosphere away, but it makes the point. Uh, if you take the atmosphere away, yeah, you just see the, sa the sun just sailing off into the distance. That's it. Like a plane. Like a really high plane, which, of course, begs the other question, why don't we ever see planes? Remember, if they're following the curvature of the Earth, why don't we see planes act like they're crashing when they go off, get, go off into the distance, they just go keep going off and off and off. They never nose down because remember, if they're eventually when they get far enough out in the distance, they're going to be, yeah, they may not meet the horizon, but they're going to be pointing at it before they go out of visual range. Things to think about. This one's called The Way, Truth, and Life. Mark, two weeks ago, my wife sent a video over to me that you compiled. They hide God. Two weeks ago, I laughed. Now I tear up. My father called me 20 years ago to a John the Baptist ministry, and I've been studying his love letter to us since, remaining quiet but ready to explode. They have hid his name, his son's name, <clears throat> excuse me, and the Holy Spirit. The time of great deception is approaching, even bigger than the past. I have spoken to many pastors, preachers, and the sorts regarding the truth, and 100% of the time, 
they cast what is within me away. I am extremely blessed and not searching for anything except a possible outlet for the gift that I have been given. I would share for free, of course. I would like to explain Genesis to Revelation to all. I am not political, not religious, just a servant searching the time. My name is Brent, and my phone number is this. I have a show tomorrow that I must attend in Kansas, most of the daylight hours, so not be able to pick up at that time. Thank you, and Father bless, Brent. Awesome, Brent. Thank you for that. Motivational, inspiring. Of course, people say, oh, what, what inspires you, Mark? You know what it is? I hate, to, I hate to say it. Tim Tebow. Yeah, look up that 2011 season and ask yourself why he's not allowed to play in the NFL anymore. It's not because he was a bad quarterback. It's because he was inspiring. This one's called The Secret Show, 192. Hello, Mark. I very much enjoyed your talk with Patricia and watch it as often as I can. I'm so disappointed at not being able to attend the IFEC, that's the conference, as I am based over in the UK. Well, there's a UK conference coming up, April 27th, 28th, 29th. Well, it's lucky for you. I really want to be able to receive one of those patches that you mentioned a lady from my neck of the woods sent you. I know it may be a pain to send me one, but it'd be so grateful if you could forward me your contact details so that I may be able to get in touch with her. Love what you and Patricia do. Keep speaking the truth and change the world. Thank you kindly, sir. Catherine Kelly. And you know what? I'm going to have to shoot Catherine. Boy, my, my to-do pile is getting bigger. I'm going to have to send her a letter and say, look, there's a UK conference happening over there, so don't fret. I have not heard about the Sydney one yet, though. The Sydney one thing was supposed to happen in three months, and I don't know. May not be getting off the ground yet. We'll see. This one's called Flatness. Hey, Mark, I don't know if you recall, but I called you from here in Australia early this year after listening to Flat Earth Clues. I was so pumped that you answered and you told me all about the Flat Earth Conference coming up. I get so much of from your YouTube and I'm listening to number 134 as I'm writing this. The Russell Brand interview was interesting. I'm a fan of his, but I thought you got cut off too much. Well, yeah, it, it is his show. Look, you got to remember that the bigger the bigger they are, the more control they have over their show to where especially if you have guests to where look he can do anything he wants what am i i'm just a guest it's his 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 party so we have this scientist here in oz called dr carl on a radio station called triple j who takes calls every week about anything i called through with the question of if the sun is 93 million miles away why are the sun rays through the clouds on an angle yep i got shut down pretty quickly anyways i'll try to call your show if the times if our times collide I think he meant not collide. Feel free to use my name and email on your show. All the best, mate. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm so glad to be a part of the truth being revealed. Just putting this out there. If you know people who know people, etc., who can shout an F.E. enthusiastic carpenter dad a ticket and flight to the conference, please give me the thumbs up. Cheers, Mark Lincoln Sharp. Uh, yeah, a, a, a ticket from Australia, that, that might be a little tough one, but but it's good. Thanks. All right, this one's called Satellite Dish Tech. Hey, Mark, I have a theory after talking to a direct TV technician about how they work. He says that all the dishes point south at different angles depending on location. He said all the satellites are above his home country of Ecuador, and they point their dishes straight up. This all makes sense to me now. My theory is that they, balloons, are all down in Central America because of videos we see of crashes are always down there. And there is more uninhabited land, less chance of getting caught launching or media coverage from balloon crashes. Let me know what you think. Thank you, Joe Mashuga, M-A-C-H-U-G-A. That's awesome. That's that's actually not that's not a bad idea. Like it. Like what you're saying there. Put all the balloons in one place. It's good. Not the worst idea I've ever heard. This one's called Number One Flat Earth Hero. Dear Mark, thank you for all you do. I never miss any of your videos. Last night, I watched a YouTube recommended video by Nova entitled The Mystery of the Mega Flood. It was about the scab lands in the eastern part of your Washington state. I was quite interested in this video as I drove through there several, t several times years ago and have always wondered how that area was formed. According to Nova in this video, the area was formed during an ice age where a giant ice wall held back a body of water about half the size of Lake Michigan, and then let it go suddenly. I ran this through my BS detectors and felt this was plausible. 
There was one thing that made my antenna go up. They said that when this enormous amount of water was forced against the ice wall, there was so much pressure that the water could not freeze. I've actually heard of this. They called it cool water, which is a terrible original name. Uh, they went on to claim that this cool water kept working into crevices in the ice wall until the wall finally broke away. This was compared to a flood in Iceland, which occurred a few years back. I wondered, Mark, just if you had ever heard of the cool water process. Yes, I have. The video was published September 12, 2017. It looks like it was filmed recently. I wonder if it might be an attempt to refute the Antarctic ice wall. No, 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 no. They're not even addressing that yet. I've heard very few people try to, to go after the Antarctic ice wall. Remember, it's also not a wall. It's just the coastline of Antarctica. It, it just It's just a 200-foot ridge of ice that that and remember that's just the beginning of it then it goes up thousands of feet up to like 14,000 feet it's a very very long very sloping wall uh and i wouldn't even call it a wall it's just the shoreline of antarctica so yeah i know I, it's it's not a game of thrones wall although some of the pictures from the beach kind of look like it oh it's not nearly as big moving on this one's called youtube Mark, I have no reason to explain why you are right except for the fact that you are right. It's over their heads. I have never seen television shows devoted to this subject explaining s dome scenarios. I just know. I guess I was born with the truth and shed all the BS. My best friend lives in Centennial, worked in Colorado twice. Wish I could live in that state. Thanks, John Bachelier from Franklin, Tennessee. And no, no, again, remember, I'm not in Colorado right now. I did spend 20 years in, in Colorado and left not that long ago, and I am now up in Seattle. But I lived in Boulder, Colorado from uh, 95 until just recently. This one's called Watching Your Older Videos. Mark, at the end of the world segments... The end of the world segments are really interesting. Some of the movies, oh yeah, he's talking about our end of the world movie marathon that we did for like some of the early things. And I know it wasn't flat earth, but it was kind of fun because I, I do like the apocalyptic type stuff. And so we were rating our, my, my co host and I were ranking our, our top 50 end of the world movies. Anyway, he says, some of the movies you guys were discussing brought back memories. This is and is not the reason for this email. There was a planet of the apes, either movie or the series that had an interesting plot point. The movie had a part in it that pointed to the apes, basically talks about an ape that had written a book that, according to the apes, was a fantastic book, but to the humans, it was just a copy of a previous ape book or an ancient human book. Wow, I don't know if he could have written that any more confusing. That being said, it seems as though in our times, remakes are more and more common. Perhaps it is just me, but it seems as though we are running out of imagin imaginative people. Absolutely. He... <laughs> Preach it, brother. Uh, like there is some sort of stall. Yep, absolutely. Look up Time Wave Zero uh, by Terrence McKenna, how he said that novelty was literally going to run out at the end of 2012. Of course, he thought the world was going to end at the same time. I think the novelty just ran out. Think of anything original we've done in any of the major media areas uh, or the arts uh, since 2012. I think we're out of ideas. I think, I think our civilization has basically jumped the shark. Since 2012. Seriously, find me something since 2012. I don't think we've done it. Uh, he goes on to say, on another note, an old cliche I've been thinking about a lot since researching what I can on the flat earth resurgence is the sky is the limit. Wow. What is your origin of that? Many of the old cliches and nursery rhymes are rooted in the old stories about events. I am perplexed at where this one comes from. I'm pondering it, taking it into the reality of the firmament, Ted, living on the plain old plain. Um when it comes to the the title, uh, the sky's the limit. I didn't come up with that. Uh, that was the uh, the publisher that gave me some options of titles for the the book, the book cover, and that was one of them. And I thought it was very very fitting. The sky's the limit. So, although I've got some ideas for if I do write a second one, what the title might be for that. All right, this one's called. I want to thank you for your video. Hello, Mark. How do you do? I just wanted to express my gratitude for the fantastic video you put together. It's nothing less than pure genius. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, every detail about it, pictures, diagrams, research, and your perfect narration and execution of the subject. I have to say it is perhaps the, wow, he's really laying it on thick, it is perhaps the best I've ever seen done, and that is coming from someone with very high standards and a critical belief system. I spent hours every 
day and night researching everything. I thoroughly enjoyed every moment of your work. You are very talented, have a very high IQ. <laughs> your awareness and observation skills are the best I have witnessed to. Hope to meet you one day. Kind regards, Michael Greco. Wow. Thank you, Michael. I, that's the, one of the kindest things I've heard all month. That's wonderful. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad you feel that way. I, I'm not going to take credit for all those talents because, well, I don't know if I have them. But it's good that I, I affected you in a positive way. This one's called Love You Program. Oh, boy. Okay, let's see where this goes. Mark, I came across your information two years ago, and I'm here to let you know that in double-checking your information and doing my own due diligence, I'm here to say that the earth is flat. <laughs> okay. Being a devout Christian at the same time, it has reinforced my faith at the same time. In looking at all the evidence that you presented, this has been the real clincher. Hydrology, why? When looking out over lakes, rivers, aquifers, and lastly oceans, water always seeks its own level. Yes, it does. When I hear that when people cling to the curvature, one of the questions that I ask, if that is the case, then every major city from New York, San Francisco, London, England, Shanghai, Hong Kong, etc., uh, he didn't finish. Then every major city, I, I think he meant be visible. I don't know what I don't. I mean, anyway. Number two, open pit mining can't work on a ball and mining in general can't work. Three, transcontinental railways can't work on a ball. Four, maglev trains can't work as well considering the tolerances that are used in construction. Good point. Number five, cell phone towers as well have to use the line of sight on the ocean floor. It is all connected via high speed cable. The point that I'm making, once one understands the movement of water from the river to the ocean or a lake, water naturally seeks its own level. It is very easy to build the picture of the flat earth. It is very easy to refute most or nearly all arguments. I have an engineering surveying background. Here is the book that helped me with this. For example, London, England has been around since 50 AD. True. If people can see the curve of the earth, the city would not exist at all. People can see the curve. It would be under at least several miles of water. Hmm. Not sure. Eh? Anyway, the book he's talking about. Wow, it's a pricey book. 260 bucks. The book's called Handbook of Applied Hydrology, Second Edition. Hmm. And there's another book. Oh, uh, there's a YouTube video as well called The Basics of Groundwater Hydrology by Dr. Gary Fox. Hmm. Check that out if you guys get a chance. Basics of Groundwater Hydrology. Interesting. All right. This one's called what? Uh, nope, that was somebody who was trying to exchange tickets for the conference. Sorry, didn't mean to leave that one in there. This one's still in October, guys. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, my name is Sam Siegfried, and I am kind of new to this belief that is slowly starting to make a lot of sense to me. But I have one question. Do you think that the world we live in is almost a district out of many, and the dome is basically the property line and... Do you think that that past the line there is other life either in another dimension or living in the same plane and the government is protecting from the citizens of the world? Yeah, very possible. Remember that something I, I talked about a long time ago, which was are we a box of kittens that need to be protected from something that's on the outside or are we a box of scorpions that never should be let out under any circumstances to run amok because of all the damage we might do? Could be either. In my in my book, although to be honest, you know, looking around, and I'm a guy, and I know how guys think. Uh, I think we're a box of scorpions, personally. That's just me. But you think I'm kidding? You know, look up the one of the early science fiction movies, the uh, the day the Earth stood still. There's been a bunch of science fiction movies along those lines where uh, other races or other civilizations come in and say, "Yeah, you guys shouldn't be doing anything anywhere, ever, because you're just savages." <laughs> Hmm. Okay, this one's called the Dark 30 Broadcast. Dear Mark, I'm sure in reviewing the painful so-called debate on Dark 30 Radio, you will realize that ballers do not present their own position for their beliefs. They tend to latch on to relatively insignificant aspects of this controversy, such as the reason why the scientific community would seek to lie to us, or biblical statements, for which we have no evidence for at all. You are one of the best presenters of the flat position, but even you got caught up in the nonsense stuff that the ballers throw into the mix. It was the closest I had ever heard you almost losing your cool. <laughs> That's true. But, but I'll tell you why in a second. Well, you know what? I'll tell you before we can get there. Um, it's because during the, the Dark 30 radio interview, 
the guy that I was that I was debating against, which was Mark D'Antonio, he was in a hotel lobby. He didn't even have the uh, the the consideration of putting that laptop in his own room and just setting up a pair of headphones and doing it quietly. He went to a freaking sports bar at that hotel and was and people around him, people, some of his peers, they were laughing in the background. They're all getting a good chuckle about it. And sorry, group laughter tends to put me a little bit on edge. And so that's why I had to lay into him as heavy as I did, because it's like, oh, fine, fine. you're going to treat this as a joke. I'm going to treat you as a joke. And we will, you know, I'll just, you know, I was, I was going to be nice. I was going to play it calm, but yeah, I was starting to, and yeah, you know, it's like, well, it didn't sound like much. It's like, no, internally I was, I was seeing red. So, uh, he goes, let's see. I suggest that you hit the ballers with facts only leave conjecture to your own, to our own philosophical debates. When we endeavor to walk on water with gratitude for the sterling work that you are doing, Len. P.S. Notice how the other Mark ran for cover when you hit him with Van Allen facts. A guy doesn't run from a debate when he is winning. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mark D'Antonio, actually. I, and I still have the original audio from that on this machine where during the break, he left. Just like, all right, I'm out of here. You know, and in fact, he even told some of the people, his peers behind him, was like, look, I'm losing. You know, shut up. <laughs> Because because I had to, the the flat Earth has too many facts and most academics try to sleep their way sleep sleepwalk their way into a debate, uh, which which happens. So, all right, this one's called Trans Ocean Flights. Mark, just a question. I am almost sure you or someone else has thought about this. Has anyone on a nonstop flight from South Africa to Australia watched out the window of the flight to attest the fact that they are over water through the entire flight? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe we we should look that one up. I don't want to come off as stupid. I know, honestly, that's that's a good point because just just because you're on the flight, it's going to be tough though because I, the chance of you having clear I mean, that you're not going to be over clouds uh, the entire flight. It's, I mean, it's a long, long flight. Going to be pretty slim. So I don't know. Uh, I don't want to come off as stupid, but I've always been told and have said it myself: there are no stupid questions. I agree. Thanks for the eye-opening that you and many others have brought to me. I wouldn't think of calling anyone a flat earther. It sounds like what it has been meant to do, label people. I would consider more being referred to as a real earth navigator. Oh, it's not bad. That's from Ted. Thanks, Ted. It's good stuff. This one's called Survival Guide, please. Hi, Mark. Love your stuff and try to keep up on the Q&As and also the Strange World videos every week. Shame I'm west coast of Scotland. It doesn't mean I don't get to listen live. I've been awake for about 18 months. My partner of 26 years sent me a link, and it took about 10 minutes. Then, wow, it all made sense. See, I really am jealous of you because it took me a long time. Anyway, would love a copy of the survival guide. We could be a pretty self-sufficient here. We're remote with one neighbor, a chosen lifestyle 11 years ago. We built our own home with certain things designed for what-if scenarios, and have the ability for a small hydro. Very used to battening down the hatches for storms when trips to the shops an hour in both directions is prohibitive. Anyway, would love to see your thoughts on things. Keep up the good work and keep it level. Jean Haslam from, uh, where was she? Oh, Scotland. So thank you out there in Scotland. Fantastic. Okay, we got time for, I think, one more before the break. We'll see. This one's called, well, actually, two more. This one's really short. This one's called Follow the Sun. Hi, Mark. I was wondering if we could just follow the sun from different intervals and locations around its path to once for all close the argument. Thank you, Paul. And they're working on it. Although tracking the sun is really, really tough because of the optical properties of it. It's, it's, there's some things there that you can't. I don't think we can track with conventional tools down here. Or even digital tools. This one's called I Am Ashamed. Mark, I am 45 years old. Army veteran, tours in Afghanistan and Iraq, injured in Iraq, wounded warrior program, did not and will not accept disability money. Wow. Next, my wife left me with our youngest child. I'm sorry to hear that. But after months of flat earth research, today I cried. Wow. Awesome. I, I don't even know what to say. And yeah, flat earth does have that effect on some people. Uh, including me. Do we have time for one more? I think we do. 
This one's called, oh, it's a little too big, but you know, let's try the first part anyway. Uh, Brother Mark, one of my, it's called Flat Earth. Brother Mark, one of my last jobs, I was hired as an electrical engineer and have been in the electrical field since 1996 and have been in the education of the same since September of 1978. Being a technical person, I look at things and data and can make instantaneously knowing the facts. I came into Flat Earth by a guest I had in my home, was getting into it and coming home telling me about this huge movement about the Flat Earth. I thought it was the dumbest thing I had ever heard. Being in the Navy, the first thing I debunked, the ship coming over the horizon. I got interested and debunked myself. I debunked the sun and the moon orbit to end up again debunking myself. Uh, my curiosity got the best of me, and I started investigating. For some reason, I heard about the Stanley Kubrick in room 237, so I checked it out, which led me into Kubrick helping the Nixon cabinet do the Apollo first moon landing. From there, I found two videos that took me over. I heard that there was no gravity. I settled that issue quickly. Then I heard there were no satellites. That is, that is not true, and that needs to be corrected in your postulation. No satellites is easy to debunk. I agree. No, I think there's something up there. I figured out where the ice wall came from that I have not heard from anyone. I found two reasons why we have a blue sky. I would type all this out, but I'm a slow typist, and it would be better to give it to you verbally or via phone or email. Um, <clears throat> no one had to convince me when I saw the facts, but oh my God, I lost some relatives when I told him the earth was flat. When I asked my closest relative what he thought about it, his answer, I am not going to do any research. I asked why, and he told me he asked God about it and was told God said it was a globe. <laughs> Here's a clue for unearthers. The flat earth is a revelation that each one has to be seen for our, themselves. Should you want to talk to me or communicate with me in any email, I believe there are ways that I came to embrace blah, blah, blah. blessings and shalom, Richard. That's awesome, Richard. That's really, really great. All right. Uh, we don't have time before the next break to start this one. So when we come back, we'll do some more emails. If you guys want to email me what you got, uh, it is msargent, M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And if you're a subject matter expert, if you listen to this and it resonated with you and you have something to add to the cause, we can do it anonymously or you can give out your name, whatever. I, I've done both. And we can talk about Flat Earth uh, on air or we can do a pre-record. We don't even have to do it on Strange World like I did with that pilot. It's in another so one. Anyway, back for the last segment in three. Dancing in the 